everyone! Today I want to talk autistic headcanons. I admit, when I first heard the term headcanon, I had no idea what it meant and I was a little bit confused imagining a canon instead of a head. But it turns out that I'm just not up to date with the lingo. Perhaps because in internet terms I am super old. So, if you aren't sure either, here is the quick headcanon definition section of the video. A canon is something that is officially part of the story produced by the makers of the TV show or film. So, for example, the fact that Sherlock Holmes plays the violin. A headcanon is an idea or belief that a fan has about the story or character without official confirmation. Things we add to a character's history or personality to create a broader understanding of that character just for fun. So an autistic headcanon is when we believe that a character is autistic without it having been officially or transparently written that way. Side note, please be aware that I'm leaning heavily on autism stereotypes just for the purposes of having some fun with fiction. My first character is Christina Yang from Grey's Anatomy. So interestingly, Grey's Anatomy did have an official autistic doctor in Dr. Dixon. But I always felt that Christina was autistic too. And not just because I really would like to be friends with her. First up, the dance it out strategy. When Christina or Meredith are stressed or overloaded, they get it out of their systems by dancing it out. I often use dancing as a stim when I'm overloaded. As a late diagnosed autistic adult, I find that if I just put on some music and let my body move, it's the best way for me to stim freely because I can't do that so easily due to years of intensive masking. Christina has difficulty with friendships and with intimacy. She's extremely direct and she often doesn't respond to conversations in the expected way. Her special interest of cardiology and cardiac surgery is her true love and her romantic relationships often fail because she won't put the natural progression of a romantic relationship ahead of her special interest. She doesn't do typical facial expressions, remaining fairly neutral most of the time. In fact, in season seven, a patient refers to her as the one with the sour puss on her face, to which she responds, I don't have a sour puss, this is just my face. Also, when her new boss in Minnesota in season nine makes a joke and she doesn't laugh, she responds to his questions about why she's not laughing with, I am laughing, just not on the outside. I get that. She's very factual. This is shown when her and Owen meet a cute baby and Owen comments on the cuteness of the baby and she responds, It's small features and oversized eyes trigger a hormonal response in humans. It's autonomic. It's what keeps us from eating them. Next up, my favorite autistic headcanon, Lilo from Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch is one of my favourite movies. In fact, Mr Purple used to call me Stitch because I am extremely cute but watch out when I melt down. Lilo doesn't fit in with the other children. This is shown when she takes part in a hula class and Myrtle, the queen bee of the group, picks on her because she's different. She also has meltdowns, like in the aforementioned hula class, when Myrtle picks on her she completely loses it, but afterwards she feels really bad and she apologises. She says, I'm sorry, I bit you and pulled your hair and punched you in the face. Instead, she has an incredibly close connection with the alien Stitch, perhaps because she recognises that they are both outsiders and they're both different and that bonds them together. Also, initially she considers Stitch her pet dog and I can certainly relate to the ease of the relationship I have with my dog as compared to navigating relationships with humans. Her special interests are awesome. She loves Elvis and photography. She also has a strong sense of right or wrong and this is shown in her attachment to the concept of Ohana which means family means that nobody gets left behind or forgotten. Lovely. My other favourite headcanon is Newt Scaramander from Fantastic Beasts. When I first saw Fantastic Beasts, I really connected with that character, but initially I didn't really know why. Then when I thought about his social awkwardness and his lack of eye contact and his unusual mannerisms, I began to wonder whether he might be autistic. He has a quality. Add in his special interest in Fantastic Beasts, which takes priority over everything, and also how much easier it is for him to connect with the beasts than it is with other humans. I'm sensing a theme here. This again reminds me how many autistic people have an easier connection with their pets than with people. 
I've recently rewatched a teenage favourite, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and it made me realise that the character Anya is potentially autistic. Now you may say, But in season 7 we get a flashback to a pre-vengeance demon, Anya, and she is socially awkward and doesn't fit in, which is actually why she accepts the offer to become a vengeance demon. Anya is logical, socially awkward and extremely direct. My absolute favourite Anya quote is just after Xander leaves her at the altar and some of the Scooby gang pop by to support her and she says, Come in! Enjoy my personal space. I definitely want to say that sometimes when I get unexpected visitors. Her autism is shown in her response to Buffy, Joyce's mum's death. Everyone is grieving, but she's looking for answers. She wants to find some logic in the situation. Heartbreakingly, she says, no one will explain to me why. While the others find this approach difficult because they're grieving the loss of a loved one, I can really relate to this experience and feeling when someone dies. The next headcanon was my autistic youngest daughter's idea. I was asking them which fictional characters they thought might be autistic and straight away she replied Belle from Beauty and the Beast. As soon as I thought about it, I agreed. Belle is socially awkward. She is bored with her life and she doesn't fit into the small town where she lives. And at the beginning of the film she sings all about how she tries to escape that life by reading lots of books. Yet, during this song where she's singing about not fitting in, she's smiling and greeting people, demonstrating some typical autistic masking, trying to fit in even though she knows that she doesn't. The people in her town basically talk behind her back about how strange she is. That feels pretty familiar to me. Her special interest is reading and she reads voraciously, finding it easier to connect with the stories and the characters in the book than the world in which she actually lives. Then when she gets to know the Beast, she falls in love with him despite his differences, demonstrating an open mind to differences. Perhaps she can relate to being the outsider. To Belle, the Beast and the talking furniture seem easier to connect with than the people in the town where she lives. What are your favourite autistic headcanons? Do leave me a comment so that I can spend hours deep diving the internet and finding out all about them too. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. I'm a disabled content creator making new videos every week, so if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel too. There are also a number of ways that you can support me as a creator financially, and I'll leave details about those in the description box if you want to find out more. Thanks for watching. Bye bye!